Hi guys, it's Crystal, the founder of Bold Culture Beauty, a two-time award-winning blog and your first stop when you're looking to simplify your healthy hair routine. Today, we're taking a closer look at five things that you should stop now if you want to be successful on your natural hair journey. In the natural hair community, we have the tendency to do the absolute most, especially when it comes to our hair care regimens and meeting our healthy hair goals. Frustrated, we often wonder why the things that we're doing are not bringing us any closer to meeting our hair care goals. The answer is simple. We're doing way too much, focusing on things that do not matter and experimenting with products and practices that are not based in sound, healthy hair care. While some of the things may be helpful, the answer to reaching our healthy hair goals are not found in the practices that we are clinging to religiously. It's time to take a step back, evaluate what we're doing, and let go of the things that just are not working. So get ready to drop some excess baggage as we approach a more simplified way to healthy natural hair care and explore five things that we should let go if we want to reach our healthy hair goals. So grab a friend and grab a pen and let's take a closer look. Listen, there are a lot of rituals, routines, and regimens that we consider law in the natural hair community. But the truth is, a lot of these things are not based in fact, they're not bringing us any closer to reaching our healthy hair goals, and they are often a source of frustration and overwhelm. And I get it. I am resistant to change and have a hard time letting go of things myself. But my advice to both of us would be to allow the possibility of succeeding to guide us. So now that we have that out of the way, let's take a closer look at five things that we should let go. Number one, figuring out our hair type. Figuring out our hair type has been a major hangup for a lot of us in the natural hair community. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard or seen this question. The hair typing chart, though wildly popular, does not address our hair specific needs and is based primarily on aesthetics. It was created by a celebrity stylist who used this particular chart to guide consumers when showing them what products from his line would be great for their hair. If we're not using this particular product line, then what benefit is this hair typing chart? More importantly, we should be looking at our hair specific needs and how to appropriately meet them. So ditch the hair typing chart and focus on your hair's needs. Number two, the porosity test using a cup of water. While knowing the porosity of your hair may be beneficial, we're going about it the completely wrong way when trying to decipher what the porosity of our hair is. The reality is that there are so many factors that make this uh, cup of water test very unreliable. For starters, the surface tension of the water in the cup can often cause your hair to float. And hair that has significant product buildup on it will not sink. In addition to that, some of our favorite products and if we have chemically processed hair can often make determining the, our porosity more difficult, especially when we're using a cup of water. In order to really determine what the porosity of your hair is, you need to eliminate these conflicting factors. So ditch the cup and consider finding out the porosity by evaluating your hair as you go through the process of caring for it. Number three, neglecting our hair. We can neglect our hair in several ways. Overuse of occlusive products, using our, wearing alternative styles for extended period of time, and um, adding excessive stress or strain on our hair are just a few of the ways that we can neglect it. We need to be mindful of what we're doing to our hair and how we do it. When we incorporate healthy practices into our hair care routine, our hair will thrive. Healthy practices include shampoo, <laughs> routinely cleansing our hair, and making sure that we are detangling and conditioning our hair on a regular basis, among other things. Failure to consistently 
care for our hair will not allow us to reach our healthy hair goals. Number four, following advice that is not based in facts. There is a lot of information available on how to care for your natural hair. Not all of it is factual and not all of it is helpful. I understand that beautiful pictures and some of the claims that products make guide our decisions when we're determining what products and practices to incorporate into our hair care routine. We need to do the background work of determining what is factual and what is just popular opinion because popular does not always equal good. So do the work of determining what is actually based in fact and use that information to your advantage for meeting your hair care goals. Number five, trusting the process. Look, caring for your hair takes work. We have to be confident that when we do the right things and are consistent, it will pay off. I understand that moving away from things that we thought were necessary for our hair takes a lot of work, but we have to trust that when we do right by our hair, it will pay off. And the good news is it will. It may take a little longer than expected, but when armed with sound advice, we can trust the process and know that it will eventually pay off. Natural hair care can be easier. Get the tools you need to take control of your natural hair experience and focus on the things that matter at Bold Culture Beauty. Well guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And for more great information on way to simplify your natural hair routine and focus on things that really matter, make sure you head over to boldculture.com. And while you're there, check out our latest digital products that we have designed to help you take control of your natural hair experience. And until next week, go boldly.